All right, greetings, friends. Welcome to the second round of the Ed Collab Gathering. Um, this is our spring session. My name is Kristen Zemke, and I work very closely with Chris Lehman to um, celebrate students and teachers and to bring quality professional development to you. This is the kickoff to session number five. Alrighty, and so it looks like uh, we're ready to go here with Katherine Hale and friends for facilitating learners and leaders in the classroom through iTunes U. I am thrilled that Katherine is here with us today. She has been a great friend and colleague over the last couple of years. Katherine and I connected through our friend Frankie Siberson, and um, she is a fifth grade teacher in the D.C. area. What I love about um, Catherine's advocacy with her students is that she's really looking to use technology in the classroom in authentic, meaningful ways. You know, going beyond um, what's the best app for fill in the blank, but really looking at how we can use some of these new tools and resources to connect our thinkers and learners with the world, to build this sense of student voice and empowerment, and to take a look at the what's next. Um, Catherine and I will be speaking next year together at NCTE. E, and I'm very happy to welcome her to the Apple Distinguished Educator community this week as part of the class of 2012. So join us now. Please remember to use the EdCollab gathering hashtag as we go. And I'm going to turn it over to um, Catherine and her students. So thanks, everybody. Hey, everyone. Good to see everybody. Um, you guys should first know that Kristen Zemke is the bomb.com, so I really should be the one introducing her. Um, so thank you, Kristen, for um, inviting me to this, and thank you, Chris, also for letting me be a part of this unbelievable event. Um, like Kristen says, my name is Katherine Hale, and I'm actually at um, Wakefield High School, which is the high school right down the street from the elementary school I teach at. Um, I teach at Abingdon Elementary, which is a Title I school located in Arlington, Virginia, just a couple miles outside of D.C. I've piloted the one-to-one -one iPad classroom for two years, and it's really led me to fall in love with the power of technology when it's woven into the classroom um, in very authentic ways. So I've never presented in this format. It's kind of scary, considering I have no idea who is on the other side. Um, hope you bear with us as we explore this new experience together. We're going to try to keep this active um, by switching back and forth between me and my co-presenters and some slides. So just bear with us. If it's a little delay, it's okay. We'll be right back to um, the next part of the session. So as Kristen said, down here, that's my uh, Twitter name. And um, remember to add our hashtag so that at the end when we have our Q&A session we can kind of look at your questions and maybe be able to have a chance to answer some of your questions and comments. So aside from the topic today I am so excited because of the co-presenters that are here with me. When Chris invited me to be part of this, he said, you know, we're going to really celebrate collaboration this time for this session. And usually, you know, that's like your, your, your teachers, your colleagues, or people, you know, living in another state. However, in my classroom, in the way that I really want to redefine school, my collaborator, collaborators are actually my students. So they're actually here to present with me live, except they're not sitting next to me because when I asked them about this, they said, that this is going to be too awkward and they wanted to have their own computer make this legit. Um, so the girls, you know, ended up really taking up so much ownership for this presentation. I was, you know, I would give them these suggestions and I shared with them my ideas and who knew that they would let me know what parts they approved. Like, you know, what if um, they didn't approve. Was I supposed to change the whole thing? So it was just really cool. They told me that they wanted to create their own PowerPoint, and you'll see that their slides are actually better than mine now. Um, and Krista, uh, maybe you can even show the picture where I stepped outside of my classroom for a minute, and my students uh, took over my desk and ended up collaborating together, which was 
pretty exciting. Um, so I think it's really going to be a real treat for you today for you to learn about this topic both from the teacher's perspective and also from the student's perspective. So we're going to switch it over to the students right now so that they can introduce themselves and then we'll come right back to me. Take it away, ladies. Hi, I'm Camille and I am excited to be here and I'm also excited about everything. <laughs> um, I love reading and the book I'm currently reading is Number of the Stars. Hi, my name is Sophie and I love acting and singing um, and I love reading nonfiction and historical fiction and I love using Newsomatic to read some fun nonfiction articles. Hi, my name is Maya. I love blogging. Be sure to check out my blog. It's kidblog.org slash Hale Network 5th. Uh, I love reading realistic fiction and fantasy, <laughs> and I am currently reading Elijah of Buxton. So, back to you, Ms. Hale. All right. I hope you guys are already getting excited about these three girls. They are amazing, and they have this awesome personality. Girls, I'll hang tight, and I'll come right back to you, okay? All right, today I am going to share with you a unit that I kind of experimented with um, very recently. And the whole point of this unit of study was that I wasn't going to plan a series of lessons that I was going to teach. Scary, right? So instead, I wanted to plan a unit of study where the students mapped out their learning plan. And then they would achieve their own goals by the best way that we learn, which is teaching each other. And then by teaching each other, I wanted to take it the next step with the um, opportunities we have with technology, which is that they could actually end up teaching students around the world, classes around the world, even adults around the world through video lessons or what we could call like a flipped lesson. Um, this approach for the unit was a little scary at first, but then I saw how so effective it was that I w wanted to see if maybe sharing it would inspire others to take this idea and modify it um, for their own subject areas. We're going to work backwards here, and I'm going to actually show you what we ended up creating. That way you kind of know the end result, and then I'll go in depth and explain my goals and rationale for it. My students are going to explain the process of it, and then we're going to have a chance to sort of reflect on this experience, both from the teacher's and the student's perspective. And if we have time, we're going to have a Q&A session and have you guys tweet out some questions and we'll answer them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up some slides. All right. So you should see a slide right now. And... This is a picture or a screenshot of um, the first page of what we ended up creating a, uh, a course. It's basically like a free online course that you get to go and learn on, on your own time. You get to self-choose what you wanted to learn first. And we were able to do this through this really cool app called iTunes U. Um, it's one that you can download free, and all you need is the code number, and then you can enroll in this course. So our code is FCDKNDANF on the left side of the screen. And if you download or uh, download iTunes U, you can just enter this code for your students, and then they will be able to uh, learn from it. So when you go into this course, you'll see that my students were able to decide on some reading skills that they felt like were important and what the unit of study we ended up um, focusing on this time was nonfiction reading. And so they came up with these skills and then when you click on it, my students had their own lessons uploaded on here. And so your students would be able to learn about nonfiction through my students' lessons, which is really cool. And when they clicked on a lesson, it would look like this. It could be a video lesson. This is Sophie teaching um, her nonfiction reading strategy. And in iTunes U, you can hit pause, you can rewind, and then this little icon on the top right allows you to even uh, take notes. Some of the students got even more fancy and they felt like, you know what, talking isn't enough. I wanted to actually have visual um, 
cues. And so they used other apps where they could actually write on the screen and then they would record their voice and then also have um, something visual on the screen that supports what they were saying. So it's pretty exciting. Okay, I am going to go ahead and tell you now the reasons why I decided to do this unit. Um, I kind of had three goals that I wanted to accomplish. So the first goal that I had for this unit was that I wanted my learners to become more self-reflective. As teachers, we need to do more to foster independence. You know, like I think that we help our students too much. And don't get me wrong, I love helping my students, but they're not going to be with me forever. I want them to be able to take our skills and transfer them into their real world. And if I keep helping them, they're not going to be able to do that. And also by fifth grade and the older they get, they learn school. They learn to wait for the teacher to tell them what they need to work on and what they're doing a good job. I want them to begin to reflect on, you know, what am I doing well? What do I want to work on next? And it's kind of um, really inspired me even more because we had a literacy coach, Jennifer Keene from Teachers College Reading Writing Project, who came to our school and coached us. And what she did is she had us go and observe our classes um, in the classroom. And um, what we noticed is that my students are awesome at you know, talking about their books and sharing about their books. But they, like, if we were to ask them, okay, so what do you want to work on next? They weren't able to really tell us. And that was something that I realized, oh my gosh, I need to work on this. So that's one of our goals for this unit, was I wanted my students to become learners that were aware of their accomplishments and were aware of their next steps. My second goal for this unit is the idea that I want learning to be completely individualized. I have this dream that every classroom, every classroom would be as diverse in stories as a library. That every child had a unique story to share and they knew how to share their story. Back in February, I went to this Dublin Literacy Conference, which was amazing, and I listened to Colby Sharp, who is an inspirational teacher and he's also start you know he is in charge of this great conference called Nerd Camp Michigan you should definitely go check it out but what he shares is how students really need to share stories more that we don't do it enough for our students and it made me think about you know how can we help them write or share stories so then I came back to school and I'm planning and I realized that when I plan whole group lessons especially in a unit when there's a series I, it's, it's like I'm starting every student's storyline the same if I teach them all the same lesson. So instead, I don't want to teach the lesson anymore. Let me have my students decide how they're going to start their story. And I'm just going to be there as like a facilitator or a coach and help them guide their own stories. So, so my second goal is let me see if I can individualize learning for my students more through a whole unit of study. My last goal and this one is really close to my heart, is being able to let my students contribute globally. Yes, they're 10, they're 11 years old, but a project or activity for even 10-year-olds has to be authentic to create long-lasting motivation or purpose. Um, I want my students to, of course, teach each other in the classroom, and that's exciting, but you know, I want them to feel like they have the power to inspire and change students and learners bigger than our classroom, outside of our four walls. And what I want them to realize is those iPads that my students have, it's more than games, that technology today and the, and the tools we have allows us the power to reach and um, affect others outside of our community and also keep learning very authentic. Um, so I'm going to share with you the process that we went through to accomplish these goals. And I'm going to go back to my slides just for a minute. OK, so here are the steps of the process. The first thing we did was the students really um, decided what they felt like nonfiction readers should be good at. And we called it like nonfiction pros should be good at. 
this. And then the students set these personal goals. That's where instead of I coming up with the lesson, they came up with the lessons. Then it's um, their turn to develop a personal strategy to accomplish the goal. So this is like the how to the what. Then I wanted them to learn the mini lesson structure so that they could get ready for uh, creating their flip lesson. And then they would create, practice, and record their flip lessons with the tools that they have. And at the end, the uh, contributing globally, they would teach each other. OK, so I want to go in depth into this. But this unit was meant for my students. So I'm going to actually send it to my students and have them go ahead and share with you the process that we went through for this awesome and really fun unit. All right, girls, it's your turn. So uh, the steps, um, the first step of the process was setting a personal goal. And the personal goal was uh, we put our names by this chart that Ms. Hale made for us. And we decided what goals we could use. There's a lot of goals that we could, the strategies we could choose from. And it was really hard because different people had strengths and weaknesses. And you might have wanted to work with your partner or your friend or something like that. So as you can see, in figuring out author's purpose, there are a lot of uh, different sticky notes with people's names on them. So that pretty much shows how, like, a lot of people wanted to do that because either they knew a lot about it or they like didn't know and they just wanted a little bit of extra help with it. So how we determined to pick our goals were like which goal is the, some people said which goal is the easiest for me and is going to be the easiest to accomplish and then which goal is the hardest goal what, so that one's probably going to be hardest for me to accomplish. So the next step is develop personal strategy. So um, developing a personal strategy is basically, so you have your goal. For example, my goal was um, figuring out the meaning of a vocabulary. So I picked a strategy that was for me, so my personal strategy. My personal strategy is skip, replace, and return. But let's say Camille had, well, let's say I added um, my, like, I wanted to do a different goal than Sophie. I could have worked with Ms. Hale or worked with my partner, and I could have figured out how to make that goal work into action. And as you can see in the pictures, students looked at charts because we had like a few charts. Like for Sophie, she might have used the chart where it was um, find out vocabulary words, and she used one of the strategies. And then Ms. Hale also helped a lot of students. She like gave us hints on how to do it instead of like just saying like, oh, this is the right step. You have to do this one. And then you could h use your partner to help you. So the next step is, well, it's not really the next step. It's still the same step, which is develop personal strategy. And you basically want to try out the strategy that you're using on your own article, like how Sophie wanted to use skip, replace, and return. I might have wanted to use skip, replace, and return, but instead of returning the word, I just did skip and replace. Instead of figuring out what that word meant, I would have had a synonym for that word, and I couldn't really say what the word meant afterwards. I just kind of make you look really bad, <laughs> like you didn't do anything correctly. So that's how we test out our strategy, if it works. So the next step, we're going to hand it back to Ms. Hale, which is learn mini lesson structure. So go on, Ms. Hale. <laughs> All right, so back to me. Great job, girls, so far. Um, I feel like they probably are much better at articulating these um, steps than I am. But I wanted to share this mini lesson step because I think this is the step that is the most um, teacher heavy, if you would say. So instead of teaching mini lessons um, each day, you know, with for about a specific reading strategy, my lessons are actually teaching them how to teach others. And I followed the um, mini lesson structure that I've learned from Teachers College Reading Writing Project. And I think the reason why I use it is because I love the fact that there's um, a part where I'm demonstrating, there's a part that the students are actively learning, and it's a really easy structure to learn. I do a lot of flip lessons. My students are very familiar with this mini lesson structure because they hear me say it, so they have a lot of modeling and a mentor text to access. 
So this is sort of like a mini version of the anchor chart. Um, the girls told me that the chart that I actually use is too big to show you guys, so I had to make another, another one for you. Um, so here's the mini lesson structure. It's technically five steps, and I'll share those with you, but I focused on the three main steps for them. Each of these sticky notes was one lesson that I spent one day on, and then the second day I would actually um, share with them the second uh, step. So the first step that I did to teach them was I taught them how to craft a teaching point. And that meant that they were basically taking their um, personal goal and then they were putting a sentence from their personal goal and connecting it to the how. Like that strategy that Camille and Sophie were saying that they wanted to test out and see if it would work to accomplish figuring out a vocabulary word. And so I gave them like a sentence frame like today I'm going to teach you how to blank, that would be the goal. So how to figure out a vocabulary word. By, and they would list their strategy. So maybe they said buy, skip, replace, or return. Um, this is just one example. It's like the easiest to explain. But there's so many other ones that my students pick. So they practiced this for a day, then went back to independent reading time. Um, and I would coach or facilitate them there. The second day, we really worked on modeling. Because if we're going to teach someone something, we need to demonstrate it ourselves. And so I taught them how to model and demonstrate using their own articles that they've been reading independently. And they would say something like, watch me as I use this strategy. And they would go into that. The third step, uh, step I feel like, is the piece that reaches the global um, community is the active engagement piece. So, you know, we're teaching this lesson and somebody can be completely inattentive, but if you say, now I want you to try with the article that you have. And when they did that, we would, we would send them to, um, there's a feature on the iTunes U course where they can have a discussion board. And so they could actually share their um, success of that strategy or a sentence from that or their experience in the discussion board. Another thing that they did, I'm going to show you um, briefly, is that they actually were sent to something called Padlet. And Padlet, they just, you know, said, come here to show an example because some of them, their strategy was like a growing flower to show growing ideas. And my students wanted to see, you know, who's actually taking my lesson and trying those strategies out. And my students were able to assess other um, students' examples or um, their active engagement piece through here. So that was a really important part of the step. Um, then after that, I gave them optional, you know, extensions if they wanted to, and that is that when you first start a lesson, maybe you want to hook them in, and so I would tell them, I would add this sticky note, I would tell them, you know what, add a connection, hook them in, maybe uh, connect it to like a movie that you've watched before, or, like a struggle that you have with your sibling or something. And then we would have a link, and basically that's just restating your strategy. You never can say it too many times. So this was the mini lesson structure that I taught them, and that was the third step of the process. And then my girls are going to explain the last two steps of the process. Okay, so the next step is, is create, create, practice, and record. So creating, creating, we use either the camera or an app called Doceri. So, um, it was a decision to make what on your personality. Personality. So I decided to use um, camera because I felt it was a little easier because I thought Doceri might have been a little too distracting. Um, so practicing is basically you take whatever like if you're either doing camera or you're doing the app Doceri. you. <laughs> the after <adversary. laughs> yeah. you take that and you start like you see how you want to do it you fix some details you fix what you're gonna say you fix what's on your whiteboard or what's on your actual board on the screen and you can actually like practice over and over and over again and actually recording it is pretty much luck yeah because practicing will help you so you don't like mess up while you're recording because then it'll just be like over and over, recording, oh, I messed up, recording, I, I messed up again. <laughs> and then recording was pretty much, like, the last step that you ever did before submitting it, and then, yeah. 
So recording was like the last step. That was the real thing. The thing that um, the the recording was like when you this was the real reading flip lesson. So the next step is teaching, teaching each, each other. other. Watching other people's videos is a great way to learn and help your strategy on your actual video. So um, um, teaching each other was probably my favorite step because I got to see everyone's finished product and I think I just felt like I could learn like in different ways I could learn how one person did it and then the other person did it or how one person did it versus how I did it. and you could see another strategy that you wanted to make another video out of by just going on the course and watching someone else's video and something that I really liked about it was people had the choice <laughs> to use something called Padlet that I'm pretty sure the Miss Kale showed everyone before or you could use the discussion board, which they're trying to pull up right now. So the discussion board, Padlet and the discussion board were were like a thing, way to yeah. get like feedback from what happened. You could see yeah. like if people actually understood your strategy instead of it being like oh, I didn't understand. Can yeah. You make another video. So that's how you know that it's not that your watchers didn't understand. You just didn't make sense. So that was our last step and. Here's the process. Set, Set personal, personal goal, develop, develop personal strategy, learn mini lesson structure, create, practice, practice and, and record, and learn from, from others. others. So back to Miss Hale. Okay, I'm obsessed with my students. Um, I'm going to show you guys a very short example of a flip lesson. This student, his name is Francis. He is awesome. You know, sometimes reading is one of the harder uh, subjects for him. But I wanted to sh uh, show you that he just stuck to the first, th the three main um, steps of the mini lesson. He didn't do anything fancy. But for someone, you know, where reading might be something of a struggle, he really enjoyed creating these flip lessons and it was such an amazing way to help him work on uh, the sh skills that he felt like he needed to work on and then help him achieve a actual strategies that he can use on his own. So we're going to quickly share this, it's just a couple of minutes long. Hey, this and show you how to Find vocabulary words that you don't know by skip, replace, and return. So I took um, a, two sentences from one article called Oldest in the World. The article is about some of the oldest in the world. So now we will read the first sentence, and I have the vocabulary words written in red so you can they stand out. So, Okawa celebrated the milestone at her home in Osaka, Japan. So, you gotta find out what milestone means. So, let's use skip, replace, return. So, first, skip. O Okawa celebrated the my blank at her home in Osaka, Japan. Replace. So, what do you think milestone means? So, it's a celebration. Celebration of what? Probably an event. So try event now. Replace. I mean return. So Okola celebrated the event at her home in Osaka, Japan. So event works. So now we know that milestone means event. So we gotta. So I have this sentence on here. The record holder said. A good diet and plenty of sleep has helped her live so long. So, I want you to do that and post what you think diet means on the discussion board. Hey, readers, so today I'm going to... Alright, I hope that you noticed that in, in his lesson, he 
you know, told you the teaching point, what he was going to teach you, and what strategy he was going to teach you. If you notice, he modeled that strategy on his own, and then he told you, hey, I want you to go try it out yourself. Those are the three basic things, and Francis did an amazing job on it. And what was even better was that he had to practice that and say that so many times, and say that strategy so many times that it was starting to infuse into his habit of thinking, and he was able to use that independently on his own, which was better than anything I think I could have ever done. All right, we are going to now go back and look at those three goals that I started talking about in the beginning of our session and how I really wanted to hope um, that we the students were able to achieve these three goals. And the first one was helping my students become very self-reflective. This is pretty hard. Um, it's still something that we're working on because I think it's something that takes longer than just a few weeks to accomplish. It's a change of um, the habit of thinking for my students. It's a change of their attitude towards what their responsibilities and roles are as students. And I think we just sort of tapped into it for a little bit, but I couldn't um, imagine that it wasn't just going to launch uh, from there if we had done this earlier. Um, I realized that, you know, Francis actually was the one who came to me and said, hey, I want to work on this goal this week, but I actually have another goal that I want to work on next week. I'm like, beautiful. Like, if you can come up with that and realize that on your own, that's huge. So let me have the students share. Girls, how is it to not be told what you had to work on? Um, how strong do you feel about reflecting your needs and successes? Can you share a little bit about that? Um, I felt pretty strong because it was a chance for me to choose what I needed to work on and it was like it was what you taught us and how all the strategies that we learned and we could choose just one strategy that we really needed to focus on and practice on. What do you think, Sophie? Um, well, I agree with um, Camille because I felt that some things were challenging, and then some things were like, um, what do you call it? Um, easier. Easier. So, what do you think, Maya? I honestly agree with both of you. But <laughs> I agree with both of you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, here, let's take a look at goal number two that we had, and that was individualizing um, learning. From a teacher's perspective, you know, this was a little scary in the sense that. I didn't have my lessons prepared and ready to go. I had to let go of some of that control, and instead I um, planned a almost like a gigantic toolbox of strategies, and I would lug it around to every student that I was facilitating or coaching, and I would have to know, you know, okay, let me, let me pull this out. Let me share this idea with them. Um, but I love that my students felt like, you know, they could go at their own pace. Um, so what do you guys think, girls? Um, learning by myself, it was like pretty much taking the ideas that were already in my head and like showing, reviewing, and remembering stuff that I didn't even remember before. Um, um, working by myself, I think, helped me be more like individual because um, like, I could have worked with my partner, but then I wouldn't really have that my own strategy. I would have more of their strategy. And people could learn faster or slower than other people. I really think that it helped me be more independent because, like, if I were to do it with somebody else, I'd, like, kind of, like, rely on them to help me do stuff instead of, like, wanting to just do everything by myself. Back to Mateo. <laughs> awesome. And one thing that I remembered um, Sophie telling me before when we were talking about this, Sophie, I don't know if you remember this, but you were saying that you feel like sometimes people around you learn faster than you or people around you learn slower than you, right? And that when you were able to, uh, during this unit, when you could create your own lessons, like you felt like you could just like go at your own pace, which um, I'm just really happy that you felt that way. Okay, goal number three was contributing globally. Um, nothing is better than authentic learning ever. I feel like my students were really hooked into this, and then we shared it on Twitter. Um, I uh, blogged about it, and once my students saw that 
there were more members enrolling into our course. Like I would show it up on the screen and it'd be like 53 members. Immediately the kids were like begging me like, hey, can I go, um, can I go work on a flip lesson? And can I, can I go look at the anchor chart again? And my readers were like wanting to go read articles to figure out a strategy that would work for them so that they could create a flip lesson and add more lessons to our course. Um, so Camille, Maya, Sophie, what did you guys feel about being able to contribute globally? Like, how was this unit for you? Um, knowing that people were watching me, like, all around the world, I think, like what Camille said, it made me want to work harder on my flip lesson. It made me want to go, like, I want to teach these other students something, so I need to go, like, hardcore. Um, I felt this lesson, like how Sophie said, you want to go hardcore, but also at the same time, there was like a whole bunch of different people and that made me nervous, like I can't just take in a video that's saying, you have to do this strategy and like repeating, like you have to do the strategy and not explaining well enough. It actually helped me make this strategy go a lot better and show how to do it, because <laughs> how different people would watch it, watch it, and you wouldn't want it to be like something simple. I agree with Camille, because like normally if I were to just make a video for the class, I'd want to like make it like really simple. I'd want to make it like really simple so I could just get it done with, but like noticing that like people are actually going to see it, I, I, I really want to like make it good, <laughs> like worthy of people. <laughs> worthy. Oh my gosh, you guys are busting out the words hardcore and worthy. <laughs> um, okay, well those are the three goals and I really um, believed that this unit, if we were able to get to do it a second time, we would achieve these goals at a uh, deeper level and um, my students even begged me, do you guys remember begging me if we could do another unit like this? Um, and I just I want to be able to try this out more. I hope that you guys would want to do this as well. I think that we have some time for some questions and answers, and I've got to start with Chris Lehman because obviously you're you're the one that made this happen for all of us. But okay, ladies, he's got a question for you. You ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Chris wants to ask you guys, what were you most surprised by during this unit or during this project? During this unit, um, this project, well, it was pretty much going through, I, like, all different grades, they do the same basic way. They, like, want you to learn and then try putting that um, strategy or that thing that you learned on um, to something else. But you got what let us make videos about it so we could remember it. And it was pretty much, like, those review packets all of those um, strategies, it was like all put up into one packet and it was easier to do. I honestly, comparing it, comparing like doing lessons from like, comparing it to like other years, like I'd have to go up like into the front of the class and like explain something and then that just kind of be awkward and no one really likes that. But like making it on iTunes U is really cool because it's like different. And like Neil said, it was just like a whole review packet, just all together. I agree with Maya because I felt it was easier to make a video and post it, and instead of like like standing in front of the whole class and giving my strategy and how I do it, I felt it was like much easier, and I felt that it was just like a lot more. Like, I could do stuff that I would normally not do when I'm, like, standing in front of, in, in, standing in front of the class. Also, it was a lot more fun. <laughs> it was a lot more fun. Okay, I have another question for y'all. Can you guys share, were there any challenges for you? Because let's be honest here, right? This isn't, like, just easy peasy. What were some challenges for y'all during this unit? Time limit. <laughs> <laughs> um, a yeah. challenge for me was the class and... Um, because sometimes people were making their video when I was making my video, and sometimes I was like kind of distracted by my friends. So I would say the class and friends were a challenge. This wasn't really like a problem, like just because of like making the videos themselves. Like it was really just because of me. I don't really like talking a lot, 
and like I'm not really that loud. So, like I'd have to like go into like a totally different room to like maybe make my video or like not want to do it during class because like there were so many distractions and like so many people just talking. Yeah. Loud. Well, I have to share from the teacher's perspective um, when it comes to the challenges. One of the challenges for me was just the balancing um, time. You know. As a teacher I, and as a read, reader and a writer, I really, really find that giving them independent reading time is extremely important. And when you do a project or you have a unit that's project-based, it's so easy to just, instead of reading independently, you toss all of that aside and then you just end up spending the next two weeks on this like project-based learning experience and you go back. I did not want to do that. That's not what I believe in. Um, so I really wanted to make sure I balanced it. So you know that's why we stressed it out. I like taught one little lesson and then they tried it out just for a couple of minutes. They said they were frustrated because they you know like wanted to keep working on it but I wanted to just give them a little bit of workshop time to work on that strategy and then go back to their independent reading time. Um, so that we were able to balance that. Another thing, like I said before, is just letting go of control as a teacher. Like you're no longer the person, you know, being the source of knowledge for them. You want to see where they go first and then guide them to where they need to go, if that makes any sense. All right. Um, are there, Krista, are there any more questions that you see? No? Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pull up our iTunes U course code one more time for you because, um, or actually, my students will in a second because I don't have it with me. <laughs> um, I do want to just thank you guys so much for joining my students and I on your Saturday, Saturday and thanks again, Chris, for inviting us and um, letting my students be able to have this chance to share globally. Um, also thank the parents of my students who let them have this opportunity and take them uh, to this high school to be here with me. You know, at the end of the day, we need to start thinking and sharing about the idea of redefining what school and learning should look like because the work world has changed and schools shouldn't be the same. We need to, you know, sort of figure out if the roles and responsibilities of the students and teachers are changing in the classroom and how we can make that happen. I hope that you consider adapting this new approach in your classrooms, letting students become independent learners, letting them be reflective, letting them contribute globally, and think of your role as a facilitator or like a coach. Um, I also want to encourage you to spread this message that technology is not a privilege. It shouldn't be seen as this swanky thing that we um, provide for students in education, but it's, it's, it's a necessary tool in our students' learning experience, and we have to have it to make sure that we build and create the best learners and leaders of tomorrow. So girls, how about you guys say your last few words and then send them off? Um, so join our iTunes U course and follow us on Twitter. Check out our blogs. Yeah. Yeah, look at these blogs. They're awesome. Keepblog.org slash hand network fit. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, be awesome, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Bye. Fist bump.